Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. Did the Tampa Bay Lightning get screwed over in Game 4 of the Stanley Cup Wednesday night? And the last I saw Moose on YouTube, very small sample size, but they said, no, the Lightning never got screwed over. But life's a matter of perspective. We can talk about this later. I don't want to belabor this too long. But if you're John Cooper, yeah, you would vote yes. If you're the rest of the world, I feel like you'd vote no. But that's just me. No, of course. You know, that's the way it is. And, you know, it comes down to did it affect the game? You know, at the end of the day, that's the part that, you know, really matters. You know, if he had been, if they had had five guys instead of six, would the goal still have went in? Probably, right? Wouldn't have really changed anything. And yeah, it's a technicality, but that's the way it is. But it's just funny that you see the photos going around social media on the official score sheet of who was on the ice. There's seven, right? I mean, including Darcy Kemper. Seven numbers down there on the official score sheet, but that's the way it goes. Uh, I got to say, I'm not done on that, but Robin watching in Prince Albert says, Rod, you need to have Bo Levi's face on the cowbell. That would be hilarious. How about this? I'm watching one of the sports network shows this morning when I went down to work out here at the Great Eagle, and I see this commercial for South Point Toyota. And there's my boy Bo, the Stamps quarterback on there, pitching South Point Toyota. And he did, <laughs> did a good job. He didn't, didn't fumble his lines. SouthPointToyota.com. I can't. He's, a, he's in my head just like I'm in his head. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. I'm ready. Edmonton at Calgary, the football battle of Alberta. The Stampeders favored by nine and a half. Deal or no deal? No deal. Stamps win by a touchdown. Toronto at BC, Lions favored by 4.5. Deal or no deal? I'm going to take that deal. I'm going to take it at home. I like BC at home. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Oh, hello, Canada. Happy Friday. Welcome to the RP Show, coming to you live from the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Yeah, buddy, we uh, <laughs> we lost contact with a the mothership there for a second, but apparently everything's fine. Welcome to the stage bar here at Calgary's Entertainment Destination. We got the Moose with us, Darren Moose DuPont, our lovely and talented co-host, and we're ready to talk football on a Flame Tech Football Friday for the next two hours. As we move him in, how you doing, Moose? I'm good. We just gave each other that panicked glance. Yeah, I was waiting for. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're good. To, yes, uh, we got you. Yeah, I was waiting for something to go off the rails. But look down, the video was still working, and then the sound came back. We're good. Here we are. Here oh, we. Are. And it's a fantastic so. day. Yeah, buddy. And listen, I pe- I see people are already chiming in uh, with comments on last night's football game, tonight's football game. As Darren pointed out, I think he'd like to spend some time on Game 5 of the Stanley Cup, and we will here on the Quick 6 Show Topics. But it is a football Friday, and start spreading the news. Tell all your friends that we're talking CFL football today. Ball for all. And our guests are Jeff Reinbold. He's going to join us from Hawaii. And Mike abu Mesrick, the very popular 10-year CFL veteran lineman who now makes his home in Calgary at least uh, the majority of his time. He'll be joining us right here. Very popular, great cup winning. Offensive lineman, uh, won a great cup with Saskatchewan, played in Winnipeg and Ottawa, too. So that is all coming up. But before, listen, let's hit the quick six show horn. Can you please do that, Director Jordan? Can you hit the horn? Hey, we heard it today. We got breaking news. I was, hey, I was just informed of this this morning in my morning meeting. I'm reading this from the CBC. Calgary has tied with Zurich, Switzerland for third place in the Economist Intelligent Unit's annual ranking of the world's most livable cities. Vienna, Austria scored the top spot with Copenhagen, Denmark coming in second. Calgary Mayor Giotti Gondek said in a statement on Thursday, more Calgarians are telling the story of their city and people are taking notice. I just want to say 
I just want to say, Danny said this morning it was 85th until the RP show moved to Calgary. <laughs> now it's third. Now it's third. So we got, we got some room to get to number one. Yeah. But we like it here very much. Uh, we're enjoying it, and they treat us so absolutely wonderfully. So that's breaking news from just within the last 24 hours. Now to point one, we're going to start with the CFL. The Montreal Alouettes scored in the first 15 seconds of the game and never looked back on their way to a 37-17 win over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to kick off week three in the CFL. Quarterback Trevor Harris completed 16 of 22 passes for 262 yards and one touchdown. Saskatchewan's Cody Fajardo, my guy, did have a tough day at the office. He threw for 191, two picks, was sacked seven times, and got pulled in the fourth quarter. Mason Fine came on in relief and tallied 83 passing yards for the Rough Riders with a touchdown and interception. He got sacked. The Alouettes started in explosive fashion with Chandler Worthy scoring on the opening kickoff for an 88-yard touchdown. Somewhere I heard it was the second fastest scoring play to open a game in CFL history. I enjoyed that over a plate of butter chicken, Moose, over here in the Blaze Bar. Yeah. He, Moose's favorite meal, if it's his birthday and you're taking him out, he's ordering butter chicken. So you're a bit of an aficionado. That's right. And you I say the Great like Eagles it. butter chicken is better than anywhere. It's very, very good. Woo, doggy. True. So I had it. Yeah. I had it last night, and I watched that football game, and it just started bad, as you heard, for the Riders, and it never got better. It reminded me of the 2005 uh, Week 1 kickoff at Taylor Field when Corey Holmes, C. Murda, returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. He ran right, trotted right in front of the Blue Bombers bench in Jim Daly. <laughs> I called it. It doesn't happen very often. No. Uh, and they're all on me. I put on Twitter that this isn't Cody's fault. Again, it's not Cody's fault. But there's just a certain faction of people that are going to jump on him, fans of other teams, fans of the riders that are going to jump on him. And actually, some of my media buddies are texting me saying, nice guys, run the Kinsman Club. Nice guys, finish last. Apparently, they want a jerk in there at quarterback. Hey, we've had some. Is that what you want? We didn't win with them. So it wasn't Cody's fault. Uh, I don't think it's time to panic, but there's a lot of panic from what I understand. In the rectangle. Well, there is. And there's some things that went away. I mean, obviously, with Dan Clark out, you saw that there was some adjustment that So nice job, Montreal. Um, I've seen the comments coming in on Twitter. They're coming in to the chat. A guy by the name of High Explosive says, Cody and the Riders are overrated. David in the chat says, yeah, Fajardo can't read defenses very good. Well, if you watch the game, and I watched every snap, he didn't have a chance. And when we have Mike Abumeshrick come up here later, the offensive line veteran, I want to ask him how the center, the rookie center, or at least his first start, Logan Bandy played for Saskatchewan. It, you asked about the running game. He didn't have time to hand it off. He didn't have time to look downfield. Can't read a defense. He didn't have time. Am I biased? Absolutely. But if people want to hang this on Cody Fajardo, then they're just looking to make him the scapegoat. But I'll also say this. It's my commentary that ran on Cat Country and uh, Rock 98.5 today. Nobody said it was going to be easy. There's some games you're just never going to win. Going in, I couldn't believe they were favored by 3.5 to begin with. And it was Montreal's home opener. They were better than their record indicated. They just weren't going to be denied on that night. And uh, it never got better. At halftime, Darren, there was no indication that this was going to change. No, there wasn't. And it did not change. But I guess my point was nobody said this is going to be easy. You are not going to go 18-0. and And it's a little bit of back to the drawing board. But I think they would be concerned about Dan Clark's status when he's going to come back. And I'll say this. I did send a message to the Brett Jones camp. No relation. The former lineman of the year in the CFL, former Calgary Stampeder, who's been in the NFL since with what? The Giants, the Vikings, and the Broncos. Here's the story that I got. He's enjoying his summer in Weyburn and Regina Beach and uh, undecided on his football future. So he's a free agent. And uh, now, I thought if he was ever going to come back to the CFL, it would be Calgary. 
but I guess I think he's maybe fielding calls. But as of last night, or was it this morning, undetermined. Yeah. He'd help out, though. He would, and that's the thing. You wait for calls. You see what opportunities are going to come up, and he would be an, he would be a great addition to any offensive line in the Canadian Football League, and right now the Riders really need somebody. Jeff the Stamps fan writes in and says, the excuse train has pulled into the station. Choo-choo. He's clearly not talking about us because we haven't made any excuses. They weren't good enough last night, and listen, trust me, I was thinking about this coming down on the elevator earlier. I've become that fan with, with regards to the Riders or the Golden Knights or whatever. I'm not really, t- really in on one team. Did you win or did you lose? Well, we lost, but we had a lot of injuries. Don't care. Did you win or did you lose? Yeah. Because the society doesn't care how many injuries you have. If you lost because you have injuries, then you don't have the depth to fill those spots. Correct? Deal yeah. or no deal? Yeah. Um, Jack in Vulcan, Alberta says, Rod, you know when it falls apart that the quarterback is usually the fall guy, goes with the territory. Oh, I know how it goes, but Cody is my guy. I have been accused, and probably rightfully so, of being too married to these guys. I'm not going to change. Oh, and David Asplin, watching in Winnipeg, says, Fajardo has to stop with the spinorama. It's predictable. Yes and no. He's got that little Flutie-esque uh, twist that he does. But nobody's really figured it out. Winnipeg figured it out. They figured it out. Yeah, because yes. I remember the banjo yeah. bowl, the first one he played. Cody did his little patented Flutie spin, and there's Willie Jefferson just waiting for him, <laughs> you know, at the train station. Hi, Cody. To take Cody to the train station. Yes. Ah, if you want to put it all on for Jarter, go ahead. But... That's our take from last night, and we welcome uh, yours and tell your friends we're on the air, Game Plus Television Network and YouTube Live. As we move on, the Calgary Stampeders listed quarterback Bo Levi Mitchell as questionable for Saturday's game against the Edmonton Elks in the team's injury report Thursday. Bo took limited reps in Thursday's practice at McMahon Stadium. The 32-year-old from KT, Texas, had a foot injury. The team indicated in its daily injury report. Stamps head coach Dave Dickinson said following practice, he said he was a little sore, but other than that, I don't have anything to report, said Dave Dickinson. So here's my take on the Bo Levi Mitchell situation. Having been in this town for a significant, most of 2022 has been spent here, I think. Darn close. Talking to the football people, I don't know what to believe. Do you think Bo starts Saturday? Yes. Me too. Yeah. Maybe that would be a good poll question. Got to remember, Tom Brady for years was listed as questionable every single week. Never missed games. Started every game. Started every one. So here's my thing. I'm not saying, clearly not saying Dave Dickinson's lying or bluffing or pulling anybody's leg. I just don't know who to believe. And I go by what I see on the field, and it's Bo starting every week. I've talked to guys that were in training camp with Bo who said that he didn't even participate. He didn't run the team drills. Jake Mayer did. The Bo, for whatever reason, he, was he hurt? Was he fatigued? Did he not want to? I don't know. But he wasn't the number one guy in team drills and stamps training camp this year. But I was also told by Bo's friends, this is the first spring that he feels 100%. And he saw it, remember that, an American trainer in Houston that uh, has him feeling better than ever. He's 100%. And then, and then it seemed like this narrative through training camp that Bo's a little limp. He came out of the week one game, but he started week two. Yeah. See what I'm saying? It's a little bit of a cat and mouse game that I just don't really want to play until Bo's not on the field, and then we'll start talking about it. From, but from Monday to Friday, I don't think it's newsworthy. Fake news. Yeah. I mean, I understand that fans would be a little bit worried and concerned that bull might not play on Saturday, but you know, right now I think he'll probably play and we'll find out if he's not listed on the official roster and he gets moved to the sixth game. Then we, then we got a problem. But for right now, I think it's just overreaction. Roster comes out later on today. Actually any minute, actually, now that I think about it, but anyways, you see what we're doing here on the RP show. We talk about all teams and all games and that's just what I've heard about Bo. You heard he's hurt. You heard he's 100%. I guess he's probably Darren somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, CRCFL coverage brought to you by Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. And Rod's Rants, too. Although I don't feel like I have anything to rant about today. The coffee is very good. It's strong. 
To schedule maintenance or to learn more about our services, call 306-781-2090 or visit us at broncoplumbing.com, the preferred plumbing, heating, and cooling company of the RP Show. It is a... How you doing? Live studio audience today here at Gray Eagle. Point three, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are taking on Hamilton, facing the Tiger Cats in a rematch of last year's Grey Cup. That's Friday night football. Winnipeg, of course, won its second straight title with a 33-25 overtime victory in December and is off to a perfect 2-0 start. The Tie Cats have struggled to start the season and will be looking for their first win tonight. Uh, so that's our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Who wins tonight on Friday Night Football? And Moose, I haven't spent, I haven't gone and looked. Let's see what the sample size is here for Capital Automall dealerships all across the prairies. 86% saying the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to win tonight's football game over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And you can put me in that stat. I read, uh, did some reading on this. Yeah. Leave that up to me while you're attending these entrepreneurial mucky muck events. I'll do the research. Yeah, the game's in Winnipeg. Who's writing these stories? It's in Winnipeg. That's what I thought, which makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, Adam Big Hill saying, hey, we're 2-0, and but we still have mistakes. They are the Tampa Bay Lightning of the CFL. They've won the last two championships. You don't got to worry about them. They know how to win. Hamilton is the what? Oh, I don't boy. know what they are. I don't know, because they've been the runner-up Florida twice. Nah. The regular season Tigers? Yeah, maybe, for sure. And, you know, and that's the thing. You, you want to compare Winnipeg to, to Tampa Bay. You look at Tampa Bay. They're not as interested in making sure they're number one in the regular season. They're going through their season trying to make sure they're the best possible team. So Winnipeg might not go undefeated. They might not be first in the West, but they'll probably find a way to be there in the end, right, in November. And that's what matters. And you know, Winnipeg's a very good football team that wants to continue to get better. So, yeah, I think they'll win tonight. So we've all, 86% have the Winnipeg Blue Bombers winning the football game tonight. Uh, David Asplin in Winnipeg says, Rod, how do you feel about the Bombers wearing white unis? I'm getting a kick out of it. I guess they're wearing all white. Why not? It's a white out tonight. Should be a spectacle on TSN on Friday Night Football. What do I? It's a, it's marketing. It's a gimmick. The Bombers again do things right. All it is is getting stuff, getting people talking. Yeah, that's the best word of my. You know what sells tickets? Not billboards. Not radio commercials. Hype, buzz, and that's what we'll be tuning in tonight to see how this looks. Right? Absolutely. So how do I feel about it? It's great. I, I will tell you this. I think when the Saskatchewan Rough Riders debuted him, and although a lot of my memories are gone from that time, it was week one in Hamilton, Ben Heenan's first game, if it matters, and George Cortez was coaching the Ticats. I think that was the first game. The Rider people will correct me if I'm wrong, but they took the field. I'm like, what am I looking at? It was that stormtrooper look. Remember, we called them that stormtroopers. Yes. White helmets, white jerseys, yep. white pants, white shoes. But I, after a while, it seemed really cool. Very cool. Yeah, and then it's like, well, I can't imagine them in anything else. Yeah. What's their helmets going to be like tonight? Have we seen the helmets? I apologize. I haven't. No, well, I guess we got to tune in to TSN tonight. We got to tune in because it's so great, and I love it. Like, I don't see enough pub about the jersey release or the jersey setup and maybe it's because it's too regular but you know i see it when i follow the tennessee titans you know every day early in the week one day they always release the uniforms and they have a similar because they have a white helmet and they have a st- stormtrooper look too with the white pants white jerseys and it looks great and i'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like tonight uh the, did you see the patriots are going mm. back to the 80s are they this year yeah that's, that's pretty cool. hot stuff too we're only three points into the Quick Six Show topics. We'll be right back with some hockey, some baseball, and then Jeff Reinbold and Mike Abumesh were joining us on this Flame Tech Football Friday. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network. We're also live streaming on YouTube, and you can listen to 24 Hour Sports Radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Are you ready? 
It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Four. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. you got to be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Grey Goal Resort and Casino, Calgary's entertainment destination. It is a Flame Tech Football Friday, and uh, the Moose is with me. I have to say this. They say Calgary's entertainment destination. I'm like, well, why not say Alberta's entertainment destination? Calgary's enough. 1.4 million people. It's pretty In the great. area. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cal we're good. Okay. Okay. But this is the place to be. Come and check it out. Looks like we're going to be full again this weekend. Why not? Beautiful weekend out here. And it's a home game weekend. Calgary Stampeders home to the Edmonton Alex 5 p.m. kickoff. We will be there courtesy the Calgary Stampeders. And I just saw on Twitter the voice of the Stamps, Mark Steven, posting the roster. Bo Levi Mitchell listed as the starter, but it has beside his name GTD. It's like John Lynch is taking over the uh, <laughs> vernacular of the Canadian Football League. He's GWH. What's that, Lynch? Great when healthy. Yeah. Game time <laughs> decision. It's an ESBG. Early season big game. Hell yes. <laughs> I love those. We still got to put them into a book. They belong. He belongs to the Atana Club. Really, Lynch? What's the Atana Club? All talk and no action. Atana Club. Atana. That's a new one. You've never brought that one up? The Atana Club. Yeah. All talk and no action. 
Uh, by the way, it is a Flame Tech Football Friday. Flame Tech is your industry leader in combustion services. Check them out. I'll continue with the Quick Six Show topics in a minute, but I said to Moose, Fridays are for football, ball for all. And let me open up the text line a little early. Uh, why not, Hey, eh? It's Friday. Yeah, sure. Doc is watching in San Francisco, California. He says, hi, guys. The football game last night was boring calling games. I had guys watching the game with me. They say this is why people don't watch the games on TV. They don't make it interesting. Maybe get the Oilers guys to call games. Let me guess. You're an Oilers fan? Who calls the Oilers? Jazz, let's get Jack Michaels. Who not? I'm not sure he could even... Well, to say spell CFL would look like an insult. I, I, I love Jack. He's a great guy. You want to get the Oilers guy to call. I know what he's saying. He's like, Jack Michaels is exciting. Yeah. What, what Hannah Ryan Singh? Uh, yeah, Hannah Ryan Singh. Who are we talking about? Maybe. Can you imagine? Fajardo! Actually, now I kind of want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we make that happen? If Sportsnet ever gets the football, the CFL rights in some sort it's of shared over. package, then... It's happening. <laughs> Listen, Rod Smith called the game with Dwayne Ford. I'm not making, I love, I love both those guys. They're super dudes. And to be honest with you, I was just saying to Darren the other day, I don't hear the announcers. I don't hear it. I'm so busy watching the game. I don't hear what they're saying. There's so many times that she'll say, can you believe he just said that? Is that true what he said? what do he say? I wasn't listening. Yeah. And that's no insult to anybody. I'm just focused on the game. So anyways, Doc wants Jack Michaels calling CFL games. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Okay. Daryl Paquette is watching in Sherwood Park, the home of Sam Steele. And he says, I'm a bit concerned about CFL attendance. Here's what I would... 16,000 and change last night at Percival Molson McGill Stadium. That's about 50% capacity. I don't know. You want to be worried about it? Be worried about it. As a certified recovery coach, I'll tell you this. Worry about what you can control. Gnaw on that over the weekend. Right? Yeah. What can you can control? Usually the light switch. That's about it. That's mm-hmm. all you can control on the light switch. You can control yourself. So you buy a ticket and go. As I often say in the media world or the sports world, if we all pull the rope, our own little share... We would have no problems. So I, I don't, I'm not concerned about CFL attendance. It's not my job. Are you? No, not yet. You know, if this becomes something that we keep seeing it go down and down and down and down and it becomes really concerning, not yet. I, I still am not because the product is still fairly entertaining. And at the end of the day, too, if the attendance goes down, but TV numbers stay good and go up, you know, at the, the, the end of the day, we want interest in the game. So eyeballs on the game. Obviously, we know it's a gate-driven league, and, and a lot of money is made because people go to the games and buy tickets. But we just want to make sure people are still watching the games in some capacity. Sure. Sure. And that's my point is it's a problem. It's not my problem. If you feel that it's your problem, Daryl, then that's cool. I'm not going to judge you for that. But I've seen this in other industries. Like in the recovery world, you have the social services operating in this silo and the addiction world operating in this silo and family services in that silo. It's like we're all connected. If we work together, we can make a difference here. But in this country, they don't want to work together. (laughs) So again, we'll just do our thing. You do yours and hope it all turns out nice again. Uh, moving on, we got to get to this other stuff here. Point four, a three-point night from Xavier Bogart lifted the Shawinigan Cataract to a 3-2 victory over the Hamilton Bulldogs in round-robin play at the Memmer Thursday night. So the OHL champion Hamilton, who's 0-2, Moose, will take on the Edmonton Oil Kings, who are 1-1 tonight. And then the round-robin ends on Saturday. Shawinigan is now 2-0. They'll face the host St. John's team, who's 1-0-1. So it's, it's a COVID thing, right? It's the semifinals on Monday and the finals on Wednesday. I don't think that's ever happened. Yeah. So weird. Rely on us to pull the rope and tell you what's going on. But big game for Edmonton. If they get a point, they're into the playoff. There you go. Into the semi. <laughs> You've already studied it more than I have. Yeah. That's what they need tonight. They need, if they get the game to overtime, or if they win, they'll be in. Because they've got two points. Hamilton's got none, right? 
Hamilton can get three points with a regulation win. So Edmonton needs a point tonight to secure it. If not, they'll have one more chance. How about that? Yeah. Uh, point five. The Stanley Cup will be in the building tonight in Denver. And it's a must-win game for the Tampa Bay Lightning as they take on the Colorado Avalanche in Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Final. The Avs up 3-1 and are on the cusp of becoming NHL champions for the first time since 2001. What a thrill a minute this Stanley Cup Final has been. A lot of the drama, of course, was off the ice on Thursday because there was no game, but John Cooper, the Lightning coach, came out and apologized to the media for not giving them more in the post-game news conference after Wednesday's Game 4. It was awesome. The guys at Fan 960 All Sports Radio here in Calgary had me on yesterday. We talked about this at length. I said John's being a drama queen. And you know what? John actually said, did you see it? You probably didn't see what he said yesterday. No, I missed it. He shouldn't have said what he said. (laughs) No, I'm joking. He said, hey, nobody's had more breaks than us in our time. He goes, but goes, what goes around comes around, and right now we're not getting the breaks. Maybe we will get the breaks again, but we're not getting the breaks. He kind of apologized for being a drama queen after yeah. Game 4, to be honest with you. I'm not sure it's going to matter, but they're not a significantly weaker team than the Colorado Avalanche. Like, I'm not convinced this ends tonight. I'm not either. Now, the, it, it is in Colorado, so that makes it that much more difficult. Right. But, no, uh, by no means is this series over. I mean, if the Loud House gets them going, we've seen 7 nothing right, in that building. That can be a tough place to play. But so can Amelie Arena in Tampa. But, um, no, the Lightning are a very talented team. They're right there with Colorado. And if Vazzy plays how Vazzy plays and Stamco shows yeah. up, they'll be okay. I could see it being extended. It sounds like a real cliché. But there's a reason cliches are cliches, and that is your best players need to be your best players. I hate that, but it's so true. That's why they become cliches. Now, I saw Rashog say it the other day. Bernie Nichols said it here on Monday, Tuesday. He goes, uh, you're never in trouble till you lose at home. And I'm like, <laughs> gnawing my lip to a point that blood's about to spurt out of it. Because how did that become a thing? That's relatively new in the sports vernacular. It is. I, I think there's some credence to it. It's not complete BS. I, but I think it can only apply to the first four games of a series, of a seven-game series, right? If Tampa would have won game four, they're not in trouble, right? But they've lost now at home. They're in trouble. I think, you know, it only applies to the first four because after that, I mean. I guess. Oh, my God. To the chat. Arlen Bruce the third is watching in Edmonton. Hey, A.B., he says, it's only week three. Calm down, fans. Trust me, it gets better as the season goes. Yeah, but you got to leave that up to us. You're a football guy. We're the media guys. Have you heard of a thing called the NFL? There's a reason they call it overreaction Monday. They're freaking out over preseason results down there. Yes. Which they should. The stadiums are full. Let us have our fun and panic over the fact that the Riders gave up eight sacks last night. Uh, John Kirby in Edmonton watching says more people are watching the CFL at home and not in the stands at the stadiums. The TV numbers show it again. And what drives the bus in the CFL, Darren? Attendance. Right. And what's being done about it? Not sure. Right. Jack in Alberta says, I do know this much. If seven of the CFL teams marketed the way the new management in Edmonton and BC do, we'd have no problems. For sure. And if ifs and nuts. But I will say this again, if we all pull the rope. I can't, just before we went to air, Darren told me, the Stampeders have come through and uh, we'll be guests at the game Saturday. But I was going to buy tickets anyways. I just wasn't going to tell you that. Okay. But... Let's just, we're going to go. Okay, if you want to come, because we're going to have a great time. And we're going to go early, and we're going to tailgate. And I'm going to stop by the pregame show on uh, AM 770 CHQR Calgary and say hey to those Cowboys. All you can do and hope others follow in line, right? Yeah. Go have a good time. Show other people that it's a great time. And then other people might want to go and experience what you experienced, right? So it's exciting. I'm looking forward to it, too. It's been a long time 
been a few years since I've seen a game at McMahon, but I did the whole tailgating thing last time too. You take laps of the stadium and visit with fans. It's, it's very, very good. Yes, around the concourse of the Agrodome, we call them loser laps. We'll do loser laps at McMahon Stadium. Of course, of course. Um, John Ohm in Winnipeg says, attendance has been a problem in the CFL for over 20 plus years. Yeah, buddy. So again, why would I lose sleep over it? It's not the guys whose job it is aren't losing sleep over it, clearly. Yeah. That's all that I'm saying. If we all pulled on the rope and went to the games, it wouldn't be a problem. So we're going to do our part and go. From T. Dot on uh, YouTube, he says it would be cool to have the CFL and the USFL cross over. You're like two years late on that one, bud. I'm not even going down that. Nope. Not yet. Nope. And Bo Levi, we'll just say this. He's listed as game time decision. I think Bo likes the drama. I think he likes the drama. Wouldn't you say? I could see it. Yeah. yeah. It's all I'll say. Yeah. A lot of football people really enjoyed the story from the golf tournament supper the other day, by the way. Still I had another about text it. this morning about it. Yes. It was great. I got him by kissing his ass. <laughs> That's what I did. Of all things. Who, who expected right? that? Right. Exactly. Point six, the Toronto Raptors used their lone pick in this year's NBA draft on Christian Coloco. The seven foot one center had 12.6 points average, 7.3 rebounds this year with the University of Arizona. That's another story for another day. But Masai Ujiri of the Raptors is proving you don't need draft picks to win a championship or field a quality team. They have one draft pick. I know. And they're one of the best teams in the NBA. Moose, I'll see you in an hour or two. Okay. It's going to be awesome because Jeff Reinbold joins us next from the Big Island. It is a football Friday for Flame Tech, and you're watching on Game Plus Television, also live streaming on YouTube, and you can always catch the podcast wherever you enjoy your podcasts, including Google, Amazon, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Kitchen is a restaurant. This with Cavendish Farms restaurant style fries. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. 
Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. We're live at the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino Stage Bar. Tickets on sale for all these wonderful shows this summer and fall. Go to GreyEagleResortandCasino.ca to check the show lineup and purchase your tickets. We're brought to you in part by Cavendish Farms. They are proud supporters of junior hockey in Canada, but it's a football Friday, ball for all, and we're going to the big island to welcome the coach. Having coffee with the coach today, Jeff Reinbold, and I feel like we haven't even started putting week two to bed yet, coach, but week three kicked off last night in Montreal. I might look back at the week two games in a second, but first, what did you see out of the Alouettes last night and not see out of the Rough Riders? Well, first of all, when you talk about the Alouette, you know, that was a team that was beat up. I mean, you look at this, Rod. Dan Back, the best running back in the league, out. Mario Alford, one of the better returners in the league, out. Chris Ackey, their great young outside linebacker, the will linebacker, out. Changes on the offensive line. Already there's been talk about, the, you know, is Kahari's job in jeopardy? They start out 0-2. And they came out and responded exactly the way you would want a football team to respond, like a wounded dog. And then Saskatchewan walked into a buzzsaw. It started on the opening kickoff, and it got worse from there. It was a awful, awful exhibition of football by Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's a good football team, Rod. But this, is, this football team has got to figure out what they're doing with the penalty thing, or they're going to be watching somebody else playing the Grey Cup in their building. They went out and had 11 penalties again last night after Dickey had talked in the media about we got to be good uh, about not taking penalties, not being the guy that hurts our team. And how did his team listen to the message? They went out and went 11 for 105. Yeah, and I think they had about 85 at halftime. What is the best way to clean up penalties? I've seen various what guys get fined for them. Obviously, you get benched or sat or scratched. What do you find is the best way to prevent penalties from happening? Well, you know, there, there's really just a limited amount of things you can do. You can sit a guy. That's one way to get after him. Uh, it's difficult to find them because the Players Association is going to appeal those fines, right? So it, it's got to come down to the character of the guys that you got in your room and your leadership. Whoever the leaders are in on that football team, they've got to have one of those come to Jesus meetings and whether they do it, you know, in private or how they do it, it doesn't matter, but it's got to happen because you just cannot take, right. This is a team now that in, in three games has over 30 penalties, right? And you look around in the West where you're going to have to win to get to the gray cup, to have a chance to play in your building. You've got a Calgary team that's disciplined and knows how to win. And you've got a Winnipeg team. That's one of the, least penalized teams in the Canadian Football League. You got to get through those two teams. You got to outdiscipline those two teams. You're good enough, Saskatchewan, to go to the Grey Cup, but you're not good enough if you allow the guys in the striped shirts to be a factor in the game. They have to get that message and it has to come from inside because apparently right now they're not listening to their head coach because he talked about it. He went into the media about it last week and that's how they responded. Coach, if I may interject, you look amazing. Very refreshed, and it looks like a beautiful day there on the Big Island. So Friday night football, it's Winnipeg, home to Hamilton. I guess the Bombers are going to wear all whites tonight. They're calling for a whiteout. I think that's awesome at Investors Group Field. I can't see how Winnipeg doesn't win this game tonight and would put Hamilton at 0-3. What, what's your thoughts on this game tonight? 
Well, it's a big game. And I mean, it's a big game for Hamilton. They got to get some confidence, right? And and you can talk all you want about, you know, been through this before and, you know, they've got veteran leadership. Yes, they do. No question about it, right? But the reality of it is you do not want to go to 0-3. No way. And you do not want to go to 0-3, especially for this football team. And I think right now for Hamilton, the key thing is their players, like their marquee players, have got to play. You said this, I, I heard you earlier talking about hockey, how your great players have to make great plays in big games. Well, right now you look at Simone Lawrence, for example. He has no sacks, no fumble recoveries, no interceptions, no big plays in two football games. He needs to get into that category. He needs to get his name you know, at sack by Simone Lawrence, interception by Simone Lawrence. He needs to make big plays. Dylan Wynn, battling a calf injury. He's been a non-factor. Micah Johnson, complete non-factor, right? Those are the guys that have got to make plays for them. They're their big play players. And if they don't get that done on defense, they've collapsed in the fourth quarter in both games. They've gone into the, in the, into the fourth quarter with leads or been real close. And what we saw last week against Calgary was, you know, just a complete implosion in the second half. Well, for sure. And I want to go there next. With that comeback with Calgary, I mean, you, a lot of people were criticizing Bo, for sure. Uh, led the league in picks last year. Da, 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 da. There's a lot of reasons too. Now he's listed as game time decision for Saturday's game against Edmonton. Here, I still think that he's going to play. It just seems like that fires him up, Jeff. <laughs> and I think he's a guy that really doesn't only want to play in the weekend. But you've been around a long time. It's, I feel like he kind of takes practices off a little bit, save his body, but brings it on the weekend. You've seen guys like that. Well, he's a competitor. He's an ultimate competitor. And, you know, let's be honest, Rod. He's been in the game a long time. That body's beaten up. You don't play as long as he's played and take the shots that he's taken. Because he, he's a cowboy. He's not, he's not a guy that's going to duck away from contact. He's going to stand in there and deliver. And he's taken a lot of hits. And those hits take their toll. And he's at the point in his career now where managing his body is as important as the practice rep. And I think that's important that people understand. And Dickey gets that because he played the game. He played that position, right? And so what, what Bo needs now is he needs to approach the games as healthy as he can be. And that means managing his workload during the week and get him the mental reps that he needs. Because we saw it last week when the pressure's on, when you have to make plays. And that last drive was proof positive. They get punted down in there tight. They got to go the whole field. And, you know, you can talk about, you know, when the Hamilton collapse. But the reality of it is a great player at the crucial times stood up and made the plays he had to make to give his team a chance to win that football game. And that's what, again, Bo still has that in the tank. Now, he's not the young guy that can scramble around and make a few plays with his feet that he was once. And he is beat up and he is brittle so again it's critical that that they keep him as healthy as they can keep him through the 18 game marathon that the cfl season is before they get to the playoffs i've got more questions than we have time for so i'll ask would you mind we got a couple minutes in this segment but could you stay for another after that for another eight minutes after rod i still got plenty of coffee so let's stay ah good Okay, well, because I, I do want to ask you about Major League Football, but I was asked on Calgary mm -hmm. Radio today, a good, or yesterday, a good question that I want to put to you. They said, how much pressure is on Nathan Rourke as the next one, that Canadian quarterback, every time that he's suit? Like, how much pressure is on him every game at center for the BC Lions? And how would you answer that? I'd say there's, there's plenty. I mean, he, he's... he's you know, in, in the heavyweight division, they talked about the great white hope, right, for years and years and years. Well, he's the great Canadian hope at quarterback, right? He's the Greg Bavra. You know, he's the guy that everybody wants. They need this. If the league gets a Canadian starter that's a viable winner as a quarterback, then I think it's fantastic for the league. It's fantastic for youth football in Canada. It's fantastic for you, sport football. It's a win, win, win all the way around. That's a lot of pressure for a young guy to handle. And it, he seems to be a guy that handles it extremely well. And I'm hopeful for him that he's able to continue to 
be on the trajectory that he's on right now that would make him one of the young rising stars of this league. And what a great story to have a Canadian kid playing quarterback in the CFL. They love him in BC, obviously, for a variety of reasons. But he like the Ricky Rays, the Joe Burrows, these guys aren't that entertaining at parties. Like Nathan looks very ice in his veins, very doesn't smile much. That's the kind of guy you want, isn't it? Like just very even keel. Well, yeah, and you know what? I've watched him closely, how he handles himself in interviews. The whole thing's not too big for him. You know, Rod, here's the thing people need to understand. When you, when you become the quarterback of any professional football team, I don't care whether it's the CFL, the NFL, what it is. And Trent Dilfer told me this one time. He said, Jeff, you can't understand the enormity of the position, right? It's not just what you do on Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon. Not, it's not just the throws you make. It's the fact that everything that you have to do you are the face of the franchise. You are the guy that has to lead. You are the enormity of the position is like no other in sport, no other in sport where one guy is the primal focus of everything. And that's the way it is, particularly in a quarterback driven league like the CFL. So Nathan has that or appears to have early on in his career that even keel that will keep him from going through the highs and lows of, you know, emotion that so many young players go through, particularly players at that position, because he's going to have a night. Now, he had a great night in his, in his opener. He's going to have a night when he's going to come out and he's going to throw three picks. And how do you deal with that? That's going to be the acid test. And he's still young. He's got a lot to go, but he's off to a great start. More with Jeff Reinbold coming up right after this. Viewer takeover for Taco Time. Mike Abumesh, we're coming up in hour two. You're watching the RP Show live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino in Calgary on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Kitchen is a restaurant fish with Cavendish Farms restaurant style fries. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM certified pre owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Ford. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? 
Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Not a lot of time, but it's going to be a great time here in this final segment. Uh, Taco Time viewer takeover live from that place, Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. I'll just read a couple of viewer comments. Rose is watching in Edmonton. She says, as an Elks fan, I hope Bo plays Saturday. Advantage Elks. Sean is watching in Vancouver, and he says, I'm a diehard Riders fan, but I will be attending more Lions games this season based on what the new owner is doing, and it's going to be fun. We've got the coach, Jeff Reinbold, with us from uh, Hawaii. And, Coach, uh, did I see your name? Attached to Major League Football, which kicks off this fall. What's going on with that? I just read it here. League-owned team going to go against the NFL this fall, but it is saying it's a developmental league. Tell me about Major League Football. Well, Rod, this is something that's been in the works for, I think, four or five years. Frank Murtha, who's an uh, agent, was one of the top agents in the world for a long time, has had this vision to do this. Mike McCarthy, who has been a life lifetime CFLer really um, is involved. He's the director of football operations. Bobby April, who was a special teams coach for a number of teams in the NFL is, is a consultant for the league. Uh, It's a, it's a developmental league that is going to be put together. They're going to have four teams in the initial season. Uh, Terry Shea, who coached with coach for meal at Kansas city and, and uh, was head coach of San Jose state is going to take the Virginia beach team. There's a team in Canton, Ohio, there's a team in Little Rock, Arkansas, and the man in black, Jerry Glanville, called me and asked me to be a part of what he's putting together with the Alabama Airmen in, uh, uh, excuse me, Alabama Airborne in Mobile, Alabama. So they are going to play. Um, I think they're going to go to camp in July. There is a rumor that I will be in there, you know, in with the Airmen. But I would say that don't believe everything you read right yet, Rod. Okay, well, I was excited for it. I mean, what we only have a minute here, but please tell me why none of these leagues have been sustainable for the most part. Well, I think everybody, all, all of these leagues have come come and gone because they want to be developmental leagues for the National Football League. And there is a need for that. There's a need for a developmental league. Now, can they survive the initial you, you know, years of losses that it takes to establish yourself? And, you know, the XFL went down because of COVID. That was tough timing. Uh, the USFL, I, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays itself out. But again, they do have a streaming TV contract. They have sold public, uh, sold shares publicly. They've raised $10 million to operate the, the league. So this thing has a chance. And But again, you know, what they're really hoping for is the NFL sees it, likes it, and, you know, basically... The, you know, the NFL is going to suck them up, they hope, and make them a developmental league for the, for the National Football League, who has to develop players. Well, good luck with it if you're part of it. What a wonderful way to spend our Friday mornings. Coach, enjoy the coffee, enjoy the games. We'll see you next week. You bet. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. 
A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Kitchen is a restaurant. Fish. With Cavendish Farms restaurant style fries. Number 16. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and The Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Deal or no deal? Are you ready? I'm ready. Edmonton at Calgary, the football battle of Alberta. The Stampeders favored by nine and a half. Deal or no deal? No deal. Stamps win by a touchdown. Toronto at BC, Lions favored by 4.5. Deal or no deal? I'm going to take that deal. I'm going to take it at home. I like BC at home. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Thanks. Yeah, buddy. Hello, Canada and Canadian sports fans around the world. Welcome to the RP Show. We're broadcasting live from the third best city in the world, Calgary, Alberta, as was announced by the Economist Intelligent Unit. Annual ranking of the world's most livable cities. How about that? Great Eagle Resort and Casino. Stage bars exactly where we are. You're not on yet, Abu, but let's bring him on. Everybody's excited to have the 10-year CFL veteran, Grey Cup champion offensive lineman, Mike Abu Meshwar joining us here at Grey Eagle. How you doing, Cowboy? It's so great to be here. Isn't it? It's, it's uh, We've done hundreds and hundreds of shows together, and mm-hmm. uh, it's the first time here. I feel like uh, you're taking my virginity all over again. <laughs> here we go. How about uh, that? Right out of the gate. Well, that's proper English. Live studio audience. I feel like at some point we're probably going to talk football on this Flame Tech Football Friday, but... No promises. Look, look at this. You talk about uh, frenzy living a palatious. Uh, look at this place. It's massive. It's beautiful. What Abu said was that the photos that he's seen doesn't do justice to what 
this is. So tell our viewers, like, it's pretty darn cool what we got going on. We're on stage in front of hundreds and thousands and thousands of the Rod, I mean, the Rod's fans here. Right. Uh, it's a stage. Underneath us is a bar. Who hasn't wanted to perform on Out a bar of, I know. That's why they call it the stage bar, by the way, just so you know. I don't know who named that, but they really this, nailed this is it. It's fantastic. It's like you're in, you can smoke Vegas. here. It's, it's beautiful. People ripping darts. If someone, you, someone grab me a dart. Next time I'm bringing my own Abu darts. Abu said when he sat down, can we smoke? Yeah. I Are you going be, to? Next time, yeah. I'm still nervous this first time. I wasn't yeah. sure what to expect. So, are you settled? Are you good and ready to talk football? I know that it's a. It's. I'm over the unnerving nature of the fact we're overlooking the entire casino, and you just go and do your show. Yeah, so many know, flashing but, lights. It's not good for the ADHD. Right, fresh squirrel. Yes, yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Squirrels. Uh, by the way, last hour, Jeff Reinbold was with us. If you're just tuning in, you're going to want to go back and watch hour one, listen to the podcast. However, you all do it. Um, I think I would have been good on his team. But yeah, I, I missed him by Winnipeg. He's your by kind year, of guy. He seems like my kind of guy. Ryan in Toronto's watching. He says, "So great to have Jeff Reinbold's take on things, especially on Football Friday. We have him every Friday." And he's a he's a god on Sky Sports. As you know, I watch soccer a lot, so see, I mean, I'll flick it on and, holy cow, that's Coach Reinbold, and he's, the, he's, a, he's their John Madden over there. I know, right? Except the, a lot. And the thing is, I'm getting over it, and I think the fact that we're out here in the world's third greatest city behind, what was it? Beirut in Toronto? Geneva. What was it? Vienna, Austria, and Copenhagen, Denmark, and then Calgary. Top three cities in the world. People are, it's going to piss people in Regina. I'm just saying, they think that if you're not in the CFL, you've died. No. Jeff's doing really good things on Sky Sports in the NFL, doing his thing in Hawaii, Major League Football, and we're doing our thing here. But the Ryder fans want to get in. So enough skirting around the issue. Yeah. How much of the game did you watch last night, the 37-13 loss to the Montreal Alouettes? I watched it a second time on the replay just so that I could make sure what I saw know what you're talking what about what i didn't see on the didn't see the first time was was actually there it was horrible there was nothing to see the first time right like you look away the offense comes out you look away and they're punted Series they're, they're, over, yeah. it's gone and uh, um yeah it was it wasn't good but uh they're they're a good team you know they got a rookie center in there no no for, forget about it. dan clark is missing the glue you take away the mortar and well, I'm, not, I'm yep. not going to use that kind of reference. He's the guy that puts it all together. You look out every play, and Dan Clark is pointing at guys like this. Last night, I saw Furland. I saw the left guard. I saw everyone pointing except, except the center. And it's tough. That first game, I mean, you know, I, 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 I was fortunate enough to sit my first season out of college. But, uh, uh, man, you're just thrown into the fire, and, and, and it looked like. So I don't want to take anything away from um, – the very young inside three, very young inside three. But, uh, you know, I almost won another great cup with Kahari. He knows what he's doing in there, and he took advantage of exactly where you should. You find the weakness, you go after it. Yeah, well, I'll say it again. Ten-year CFL offensive lineman, great cup champion, Mike Abu, Meshwick with Winnipeg, Ottawa, and Saskatchewan. Yesterday, we had Matt Kellett in that chair, and he was kind of examining the kicking game, and it was amazing. And I was looking forward to today because I knew you would examine the line play because people are saying with Logan Bandy at center, here's the thing. <laughs> uh, Kellett's like, I'm picking the Riders to win. I said, well, just so you know, Dan Clark's out. We've got a rookie making his – debut starting in center he's like oh wait no i'm picking montreal yeah and that makes logan bandy look bad but i watched the game too i know enough to be dangerous he wasn't bad he but, wasn't missing blocks but and, and and here's what here's what i was thinking i wish everyone had the opportunity to play football in their lives to just show how unimportant they are but how important they are the m and the e and team are are crucial and you're not throwing in a rookie center who's playing who's he playing beside I played my first game next to Dave Van Coney. He, I think he played 300 years in the league, right? right? Like, I didn't have to do anything. He said, you get that guy, you get that guy, you get that guy. Later in my year, Belton Johnson's first start, he, he flew into Winnipeg the day before the game. He played next to me. I told him everything to do, and he'll tell you the same thing. Um, you got to help the younger guys. When you put two younger guys together, that's that... that Everyone's getting paid, right? They got a all maybe a Hall of Fame nose tackle playing against a rookie, a rookie center and a second-year junior football guard. 
Yeah, well, so Je- uh, well, I, we can bring in the viewer comments now. I told you they were excited to have you here, and they are. John in Winnipeg says, Mike Abu Meshrick, nice T-shirt. Where do I get one? And for our listeners that, don't, that aren't watching, it says adopt shelter dogs. Where do they get a shirt like that? Um, Southland Mall in Winnipeg? Or, or not Winnipeg. He's in Winnipeg. I'm, in, where am I'm I not now? in Winnipeg. I'm in Calgary now. Yes. Every decade I seem to slide a province over. There have been times that I've woken up here, looked around and said, where am I? And I'm like, I thought those days were over. That used to happen all the time. Oh, yeah. Calgary. Gray Eagle. It used to be, who are you? Right. Ted in Red Deer. A question for Mike. With a young center, does he still make all of the line calls? That, that's what I was just saying. Yeah, you'd, you'd hope so, but you can only call what you see. And if you don't see it, you can't call it. And he's not seeing anything. He's got his eyes as open as can be, and he's seeing nothing except a 320-pound all world nose tackle in front of him and a bunch of other colors and flashes and light. It, what, what, that, what, I said earlier that I wish everyone got to play football to find out how important they are, but that, you, you can't describe how fast that first game is. You, 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 you can't describe it. You can't see. People are blurs. The 20-second play clock feels like one second or 20, you know, one second feels like 20 seconds. It's, it's just a gong show, like you, it, it, mentally. And, uh, I mean, I think he didn't play bad at all. Right. But, but the line struggled. But, I mean, I mean it, it, you got a rookie against an, all, an, all, an, all, an all-star, a perennial all-star against a rookie making his first start. What's going to happen? Yeah. I, I don't need to tell you. You know, you, you got a bird in a semi. What's going to happen? <laughs> right. And, until that bird grows bigger. And, to fly out of the way. Right. Nothing's wrong with the bird. Exactly. By the way... Jeff, the Stamps fan, writes, and he says, first-round pick Jalen Philpott will make his Stampeders debut Saturday night in a stadium he knows well. I wanted to point that out because Bo Levi Mitchell is listed as a game-time decision for Calgary against the Elks. Saturday will be there, 5 p.m. at McMahon Stadium, and Jalen Philpott, indeed, is listed on the roster for the Stamps for the first time. We did address last hour that Bo is a game-time decision for the game. He was listed as questionable yesterday. We talked about this with Jeff Reinbold last hour. I think Bo enjoys the drama of the will he or won't he play, but in the end, he always plays. So I'm not getting sucked into the fake news. It'll be news if he doesn't play. If he's, if, what do they say? If he's dressing, he's healthy enough to play. Of course, yes, or he should be playing if he's dressing, absolutely. Now back to that Ryder game last night because my phone was blowing up, as you can imagine, with the report from the rectangle, they're very upset. If you're Craig Dickinson in the coaching staff and you had a horrible outing, but you know you're a good team, because there's a difference. He's not saying we're terrible. Did you still sign Brendan Labatt? Is that what you're going to say? Yes. Or Brad Jones. Next question. Uh, he doesn't want to play in Regina. Well, that's what I heard, but... Money talks? Hmm, I've heard that before. Yeah, I think... Yeah, yeah. Brad, I mean... What, how old is he, 30, Brett? 31? Brett, yeah. I'd have to go to the big board. I can go to the big board yeah, if you want. Yeah, but he's, I mean, he's not, uh, you, you, you will get a couple more years out of him, whereas Labatt would just be a, a, a plug. They need, the, the Riders need to find some help at offensive line. Right on 30. Right on 30? So, yeah, you bring him in and then you build in guys around, uh, around that. Uh, they need some help at offensive line. Not, not, just, uh, not just the center either. And not just because Dan Clark got hurt. What do you think about this? David Ice watching in Winnipeg says 59 offensive plays for the Riders, 39 plays for the Alouettes. If you saw the time of possession, it was like 35 to 29, whatever that adds up to. Whatever. I'm not good at math. For the Riders? 30. Yeah. They handily won the time of possession battle, but clearly that doesn't matter, especially when you're turning the ball over. Well, yeah, yeah. When, when you get sacked, the clock keeps running, you know. An incomplete pass, at least, the clock stops. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, you need all 20 seconds. If you know what you're doing, you're running, you're gunning, you're going. Um, but I'm, I'm very surprised, surprised to hear that. But, but then again, they were just trying. I, I think the Riders just wanted the game to be over. Halftime, they just maybe. I know I did maybe, watching it. And I, 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 yeah, the fourth quarter, I think, that handoff, 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 handoff. Um, it's 11-11 Mountain, by the way, 111 Eastern, if we want to point that out. 
You're on the right track. Trust your gut. The angels are nearby. But I'll say this again about Brett Jones. I don't think you heard it last hour. I did a little poking around, Abu. I still do a little of that. And they say that he's enjoying his hometown of Weyburn, Sask, and Regina Beach, I believe. Uh, This is a guy that played in the NFL with the New York Giants, the Minnesota Vikings, the Denver Broncos. He's a free agent now. But things do change. You say you heard he didn't want to play for the Riders. I heard that too when he was playing for Calgary. But he likes being at home, and that's how something completely different, right? I mean, guys want to, especially if you've been in the NFL where, they, where it's a grind, it's a 10 hour day, it's an eight hour day, or whatever it is. It's, a, you know, you're looking over your shit. The no fun league, right? This is, uh, from my understanding, I've never done it before, but for my, the CFL day is four and a half hours, you know, six hours if you work out. Um, and it's a lot more relaxed. I think uh, it's kind of be fun. Oh, all right, I'm going, honey. I'm just going to run around in some tights for a bit. I'll be home to do harvest or whatever, yeah. however farm people talk, you know. Um, <laughs> it's a lot more laid back, more like a hobby. Well, I could see him doing it. Brett's sure. not a farmer. I'm not sure what his family does in Weyburn, but Ben Heenan is. And that reminds me. It's a great example you bring that up. It kind of depends on how much you love the game of football, how much you love being an offensive lineman, because Ben Heenan came back from the Indianapolis Colts. They want to play football again. Wanted to farm. We all thought, what's wrong with you? See, that drives me nuts. Just because you like coffee doesn't oh, mean me, I like I know coffee. It. Trust me, Just I know you it. like something. And that empathy, right? Like, good. Good for him. Be excited for people. And he's never looked back. What? But is Brett Jones that guy? Brett Jones has made far more money in the NFL than Ben Heenan ever did. Maybe he doesn't want to play again is what I'm getting at. Absolutely, right. How much trouble are the riders in then? Because Dan Clark's not... I can't imagine coming back, him coming back this year. Have they announced they signed Brendan Labatt yet? Well, there's another one. Guy hasn't played for... This would be the third year out. Could you imagine coming back after that? They need someone in there to make the calls, you know, to... Knows what they're doing. And no, no, I don't mean any disrespect to Bandy. I mean, I could show you my first year in the league. I just told you, Banky Van- told me everything to do. Uh, and when he wasn't there, Mo was telling me, like... Uh, Elo and Eby? Elo and Eby. Um, yeah. uh, David in Winnipeg says, Bo Levi complained of soreness. That's all that is wrong accordingly so i think he plays that's what i'm saying too i think he doesn't care for practice as much from what i understand with guys that have been on the field with him he lets jake Mayer do the 12 on 12 stuff certainly in training camp he did and bo brings it on the weekend i think that's enough isn't it yes i mean depends who you are and bo i think probably did enough just to show up on he's earned it Yeah. yeah yeah exactly uh, but how long has he been out now? There's timing with receivers, and there's camaraderie, and there's uh, huddle presence. And, uh, you know, if he comes into a huddle and there's three people that don't even know who he is, it's a problem. They're 2-0. and You know, I, I think it's not a problem until it's a problem. Fair? Well, that's a problem. That your quarterback's not 100%? Well, whatever. Or... I mean, it's not a I mean, yeah, you can paint over a problem, or you can... Ad- uh, address it at the time. Well, Bo Levi Mitchell listed as a game time decision for the Calgary Stampeders in their Saturday game against the Edmonton Helks at McMahon Stadium. We'll talk about that game when we return. We'll talk a little about the BC Lions Toronto Argonauts game. Tonight's Winnipeg Hamilton game. Uh, Abu's former club going after it in Winnipeg tonight against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And we'll bring in your viewer comments as well. It's just a boo and I for the entire second hour, and then we're going for a buffet. It's like the old days. Yes, exactly. We'll be right back on Game Plus Television Network, YouTube live streaming, and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
led to throw 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Every kitchen is a restaurant. Ish. With Cavendish Farms Restaurant Style Fries. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. That is Calgary's entertainment destination, Great Eagle Resort and Casino. By the way, coming up this summer and fall, here are just some of the shows in the event center. The Beach Boys, July 28th, my brother's birthday. The Tea Party with One Bad Son, August 3rd. Nazareth with special guest The Headpins, August 12th. Dancing Queen, a tribute to ABBA on August 13th. Bare Naked Ladies, August 20th. Terry Fader, the winner of America's Got Talent, September 16th. Comedian Tracy Morgan and his No Disrespect Tour, September 29th, for the entire list. And to buy tickets, go to Great Eagle Resort and Casino.ca. It's a football Friday for Flame Tech. Mike Abometric is with us here at the stage bar at Great Eagle. There you go. They haven't, there you go. Do it again. There you go. He says that the workouts have been working great for him. How about that? Ten years in the CFL. Adopt sheltered dogs. That's the message that he's sending today. And yes, it's a live studio audience. That's why Abu is flexing and uh, being a boo. I don't know where to go. for. we got a lot of great comments coming in here from Jack in Vulcan, Alberta. You know him. He says, Abu is one of my favorite guests on this or any show. Love Abu's lyrical artistry. Love it, RP Show. Well, I'm glad you do, Jack. I'm still not used to it. I think he says that to everyone, though. <laughs> no, he actually doesn't. I'll be honest. He doesn't. No, I know. Uh, from T. Will, watching in Winnipeg, he says, Thanks, Rod. This stupid big time song has been stuck in my head for days. What song is that? Is that a song that airs during the commercial breaks? That's one of the commercials. <laughs> Clark says, imagine how they feel. The guys in the Millennium Falcon back in the uh, sweatpants capital. Tonight, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, what? The Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Hamilton Tiger Cats at IG Field, the boo. 
the Bombers are favored. I should look up by how much. I'll go to our exclusive betting partner, Bet Regal, and have a look. But what it's going to be think? by too much. Whatever it is going to be by too much. We you think it's going to be a tight game? Um, well, Winnipeg's not as good as, as really? people think they are. They're really good. But you can still be really good and not as good as – and not world beaters. And, and, but for sure, Hamilton isn't as bad as uh, – as people think they Keep are. talking. But for all the most, are, are, but that being said, are those the, is that the best and the worst team in the league right now? Yeah, probably. Uh, Statistically, yes. Yeah, yeah. But as we saw, I mean, last night, we could say the same thing. Best team in the league playing the worst team in the league, and you saw what happened. Um, the, the, the Riders got shellacked. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the Ticats the will show up. No way that uh, Evans is as bad as he's been the last two games uh five point five point favorites oh, okay are the winnipeg blue bombers all right i'll take the bombers bombers by eight is what i was saying i thought it'd be double digits you know and it's, we have a lot of viewers you probably know in winnipeg on game plus tv and certainly our streaming numbers say the same the fourth greatest place to live in the world winnipeg. fifth vienna austria Beirut. copenhagen denmark calgary alberta winnipeg says abu that's your list bro. no <laughs> The World Economic Intelligence Unit. Uh, by the way, Calgary favored by eight over the Edmonton Elks Saturday at McMahon. There will be an elk crossing at McMahon Stadium. I stopped to take a picture yesterday of the elk crossing on the way out to the mountains. Remember when uh, Jones took over in, in Regina? They Do went, I ever. They went 0-10. Yeah. I respect that. He doesn't want players just to fill the spot. He's having additions. He's looking for these guys. He's looking for these guys. When he finds those guys, then they'll start winning games. He's not going to go and put some guy that's getting paid big money into a spot that he knows that doesn't fit. You know, you're paying a guy 100, 200 grand a year to does not fit into your, uh, into your scheme. No, go and get, you know, three guys at 75 grand each and see which one fits. And then give him the big contract. Could I work. Mean, that's that's Jones Anomics or whatever it is. You Jones Anomics. Write it down. Find, find the players that fit your system. We just came up with a term: Jones Anomics. Chris Jones Economics. And, you know, and, <laughs> they love it here at the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. You know, and, and uh, you know, you, you you know, a lot of the young coaches don't have that uh, flexibility to lose. Because, you know, every game your, your butt's on the line. You know, Belichick does that. He finds guys that fits his system. Jones does that, but he leaves every three years, right? So um, it's tough for him to compare him to Belichick, just finding guys for a system. As I roll through the betting lines from Bet Regal for week three, also the BC Lions favored by 5.5 over the Toronto Argonauts. I'm not done on the Jones thing yet, but you've thrown so many things. We get a couple squirrels together. Well, you act like a couple nuts. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm more conversational. Anyway. Yes, which is totally fine. We're a little all over the place. Although I was saying to Darren, I was watching a lot of, pardon the interruption, be, before I left Florida, and I'm like, you know, if we were the Canadian version of that, I'd be happy. Well, I thought that's what we, because we talked about this before you went off. I thought that's what we were going for. But yeah. now, now I got to sit here and look at this, talk to this thing right here. It's I changed a little bit. It, it it is, but I don't. I haven't changed. You don't so. have to. I haven't changed. Uh, Triple Lindy Mel watching in Hamilton says, let's go, Tie Cats. I'm liking Fontana's replacement on the offensive line, and Dane Evans will have time to throw. Cats by three. Jeff the Stams fan says, Tie Cats are needing a win. Plenty of motivation playing the team that beat them two great cups in a row. Very simple question is, do the Bombers win a third consecutive? Can you imagine if they did? Like, at the, at the beginning of the year, everyone says, all right, the Bombers are going to go 14-4 and four, or whatever. Wait a minute. I have too many games in there, don't I? No. Nope. Not yes. this year. Oh, my goodness. I've just been playing too much Madden <laughs> with so my kid where there's only 16 games. Yeah, 14-4. Four, four. All right. Well, now you've got to pick the four games that they lose. This isn't one of them. Right. Right. Could they lose? Yeah, of course. They're, they're, they're snapping a the football. Oh, man. But this isn't one of the four games that they're losing. If you thought they were going to lose four games, which... That would be about right. Dominic, watching on YouTube, says in the stream, enjoying the CFL talk. Great to have. Yes, tell your friends. This is why I don't understand. We are in a CFL city. There should be far more CFL talk in these CFL markets than there is. But for whatever reason, there isn't. So we'll bring it. However, Abu has hit on something here that 
That was my off life's, camera, though, and my, she left. No, I know. Yeah, she left. My life's changed, too, obviously. For 20-some years, going into a CFL season, I would predict how many wins the Riders would have. This is the first year in, since the Mulroney administration that I haven't done that. I don't even stop to think how many wins I would think the Rough Riders should have. You said that you think Winnipeg would go 14-4. and Who would argue I, that? I just threw that out. No, but they've only gotten better, and they're the two-time defending champions. That sounds like a very reasonable... They're one hit away, right? Yeah. They're always one hit away. Who isn't? Ooh. Don't kick the camera. Rookie. Sorry. But let's just talk about Sask for a second. They're 2-1. and one. Sa- Same with, for, with the offense that they have, they need to keep game close. games close. If games are close in the fourth quarter... The last, last week notwithstanding, Cody will, will win those close games. They've got the character to win the close games. They don't have the talent to win a game 60 to, 60 to 59. You don't need to either, though. Well, you better not. I thought you were going to say 60 to 10. Well, Continue. Well, Sorry well, for interrupting. Well, what, what happened in last night's game is they went down early. They went down big early, 23-3 at the half. They don't have the offense to come back score three touchdowns before you score one. They, that, that's not the team that they have. They have a, they, they have a you know, that, like I just said, they want to keep the game close, have a really good defense, and uh, score as many points as they, ball control. They lost the game and they dominated ball control. That's what they want to do. They want to stop you, your offense. From so being based on. on that, they're an outstanding team. Yeah. Outstanding. Based Great on that, contenders. I would put them at 10 wins. So what you're saying is they're not going to blow out anybody. No, but I, you know what? I'd go about, yeah, I was thinking about 11, 10, 11. But when you're in the playoffs, that's the kind of team that you don't want to play against. They got a team that could win the Grey Cup at 10 wins. Grind the ball, play defense, win the tight games. These early season records, by the way, don't mean a lot based on the game notes that I'm reading. But I, I just want to read what the viewers are saying here. This is interesting. Zach... Nelson is here in the Gray Eagle, and he's writing in the chat. How about that, right? <laughs> we really How got something that? going here. Approved. Zach says, if the Blue Bombers win a third straight Grey Cup, it will be a dynasty, in my opinion. Listen, Blue Bombers and dynasty were never were mentioned in the same phrase before, and now they're on the cusp of that. That's pretty exciting stuff for one. When you were there, would you have thought... There will be a dynasty uh, in the future here a decade from it's now. It's great to say, of course. Over a decade. Of course, you always think you're going to. I thought I was yeah, part it, of that dynasty. It starts by winning one. What did you guys go, 14-4 well, that year? The first time Kahari came in, uh, Charles Roberts came in, you know, we had a pretty good team. We, and we lost, to, we lost to Calgary in, 19, in 2001. Calgary was, you're talking, about the, you're talking about bad starts. Calgary had a horrible start. They finished the season uh, 8-0, I believe, um, and then played Edmonton, who was the best team in the league, well, next to Winnipeg, and Edmonton turned the ball over nine times. Calgary ends up backwards into the Grey Cups and, and beat Winnipeg, which was, at the time, the best, conse- most consecutive wins in CFL history, and they won a Grey Cup. So, yeah, I thought that was going to be a dynasty from then on. People are digging the uh, CFL talk, as I mentioned. Some guy, I don't know who, some, he paid. You can pay money on YouTube if you're watching to get your comments read. Or at least get them noticed by me. Did you know that? So some guy wrote in, this is funny. He's, consider this, this is what he wrote. I am Rod Peterson. I said Harris cheated back in 2019 and there was video proving it. But I will deny it. This is, he's trolling me because I, I, did, I didn't remember saying that Andrew Harris, by virtue of being caught with a performance-enhancing drug, cheated. I guess I said it. Uh, you got to move on, dude. We're talking three years ago. Andrew Harris doesn't even play for Winnipeg anymore. So he's like, he went and looked up the video. You said it, see? It's okay, so, so I did. And what? You win. Wah, wah, wah. Get a life. It's so easy to get caught with, uh, with performance enhancing anything in your blood. But it's also fairly easy to mask Get away it with as it? Well. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. clearly it's not. Yeah. If you're doing stuff, you can probably hide it better than, you know. Uh, I remember one guy almost got, uh, I guess it was in college, he took uh, Benadryl and got in trouble, couldn't play that week or something like that. In U-Sport, CIS? 
This is like whatever they were years, calling it yeah, then? Whatever it was called then, yeah. Um, T. Will in Winnipeg regarding the Bombers says it's even more impressive when you consider that it would be three championships over four years. It's hard to keep a team together that long. And he's right. Why? He's, right. he's talking about the, the missed year of 2020. They yeah. could have lost a lot of guys after that, and they didn't. You ever met Mike O'Shea? Of course. You surprised that he's... No, him? not a bit. Yeah. Trained with him in Toronto when we were both players, and I hated him. We would have probably won another Grey Cup in, tw- in, in 2000, but I'm lined up. It's third and one. We're going in to score in Winnipeg, and O'Shea's linebacker. He goes, hut, and I go offside, 15-yard penalty, or whatever. Penalty, we're punting the ball now um, instead of going in and winning the game. Uh, so I hated that son of a gun, but, you know, go- going in, and I'm from Toronto. He was in Toronto with all those guys going. He's the, one of the, he's one of the, I can't think of a better leader right now than, than him. No. Aust- Austin Miller. Uh, man, he was, he was making me run up and down sprints, and I don't freaking You don't sprint. like running. I don't sprint, man. I know. I kind of wish that I liked lifting weights more than running. I love running, but that's I, why I'm built like a, you do it, a giraffe. You do it, but... Because yeah, no, you have to. He's a, he's a supreme leader. He's a, he's a ruler. He was born that way. Whatever he'd be doing, he'd be successful at. That son of a... Just furthermore... Well, it's one of those things where when he's on your side, you love him. When he's not, you hate him. It's simple. Uh, from Andrew Harris cheated back in 2019 from that account he says I can move on now that you've admitted it okay thank you move on but I'll say it again I listen you didn't hear me say it I was at the 2017 Hall of Fame induction in Hamilton O'Shea's acceptance speech I was working for the riders at the time I'm like ah damn it he's gonna kick our ass for years because this guy gets it yeah, this right. was before they'd won in Winnipeg. Now they're on top. What makes you think they're going to relinquish being on top anytime soon? You know, finding guys that'll run through a wall for you. It doesn't matter what plays you're calling. What's the secret to that? Being genuine. Yeah. Seeing players and not, not uh, numbers or systems. Now they say Jones is like that, Chris Jones. There's different um, ways to do it. There's it, it, different ways to the top of the mountain. Right? Yes. We need to break and come back, but I want to talk about, looks like we have a lot of Winnipeg viewers today. Dave Ritchie going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, this way. finally. He's I couldn't believe he's not on. I can't he, believe he's not he's there. He's a warrior. Yeah. And we'll talk about it, all of that when we come back. It's a football Friday for Flame Tech, industry leaders in combustion services. We're live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino on the Game Plus television network, YouTube live streaming, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG. Always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Every kitchen is a restaurant. This 
with Cavendish Farms restaurant style fries. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Four. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Number 16, quarterback. Matt Donegan. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. A sports update before we jump back into the football from Great Eagle Resort and Casino. The Toronto Blue Jays are back in action today, kicking off a three-game set against the NL Central leading Brewers in Milwaukee. Righty Alec Manoa gets the start for Toronto. and Adrian Hauser goes to the mound for the Brewers. The Ottawa Blackjacks won their first CEBL game of the season with a 92-84 victory over the Edmonton Stingers on Thursday night. The Blackjacks built up a 20 plus point lead in the third quarter and withstood a Stingers comeback in the fourth quarter for a win. The Blackjacks moved to 2-7 and seven, while the Stingers fall to 5-5. Five and five. Tonight in the Canadian Elite Basketball League, the expansion Montreal Alliance are at the Fraser Valley Bandits. And might as well go through the sports schedule here. Game 5 Stanley Cup Final tonight, Tampa Bay, Colorado, 8 p.m. Eastern. CHL Memorial Cup, Edmonton. Oil Kings taking on the Hamilton Bulldogs, 6 p.m. Eastern. CFL Hamilton at Winnipeg. And uh, that's as far as we'll go on that. This sports update for Ballers Rec Room, your official home of slow pitch, open Wednesday to Sunday for the Tap Brewhouse and drive through Liquor Store and for Red Bull Canada. Red Bull gives you wings. Mike Abu-Metric is with us, 10-year CFL veteran. Western University Hall of Fame. Yes, home of the 2022 Vanier Cup. There you go. Congratulations. How about that? No, no, they're hosting it. That's what I mean. They won it last year. Congratulations on everything that you've accomplished. It's really, in your really life. an amazing wow. program, really. Clearly. Handsome people, too. <laughs> yes. Modest, um, humble. He's a warrior. Oh, damn. Dave Ritchie. Yes. Going into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. I'll, I'll go to the big board and call up his resume for those that don't know. But you played for the man. He gave him a shot. Out of Maryland. Yeah, he was... Um, do you want to give him... A, Give her. Uh, he, he, uh, so I, I, was, I was drafted to carry a bag to a very, very, very veteran offensive line. To carry a bag and take reps during training camp. I, I had no business being in the CFL. None. Um... Dave Ritchie on day one of practice says, you know, I want a really aggressive, I want to see you go, but I don't want any fights. If you're fighting, you're out of here. I got into 11 fights that training camp, and I guarantee you that is how I made the team. It wasn't on my football ability. He just kind of, uh, I got beat up so much, Benny Goods, all these, this great defense, I get, but I kept getting up and going back in and getting up and going back in and getting in a fight with and then going back in and... Uh, um, he noticed either how tough I was or how dumb I was, and he gave me a shot. He let, he let me carry bags and get coffee for the guys for the rest of the year, and uh, I figured out how to play football well enough to, to start from the following year, which was awesome. So yeah, I really think he did give me, give me a shot. No one else would. I'm going to tell you, I hope whomever writes the 
biography for Dave Ritchie when he goes into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in September does a better job than Wikipedia. I'm serious. Like, for one, here's what it says. As coach, career history, BC Lions, 1993 to 1995. Montreal Alouettes, 1997 and 98. Blue Bombers, 99 to 04 when you were there. And then the Zurich Renegades, like over to Europe. And the Milano Seaman. <laughs> I know. But from Wikipedia, he is best known for his days as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers head coach from 99 to 04. He retired following the end of the 07 CFL season, although he was considered for the 2008 Saskatchewan Rough Riders head coach position. He won 108 regular season games in the CFL. Who puts in that he was considered for the job in 08 when Miller got it? You were there then. Yeah, that's wow. It's weird that it would be in Wikipedia, but it doesn't say anything about being a coordinator. In the Grey Cup in 94, he was a coordinator. He... He played back catcher, <laughs> you know, like... Uh, That's what I'm saying. I just... Does not have his history as a coordinator anywhere here. This is a very thin biography of Dave Rich. It's yeah. not fitting of what he's he due. A defensive juggernaut. He found... Uh, he's one of the guys... Him and BT found Charles Roberts, one of the greatest running Blink. backs of all time. Um, He was tough as nails, man. And, I, and, and, and if you know anything about me, I need that kind of guy. I've, of course, Austin and Miller were cool at the end of my career, but I wouldn't have done well with them at the beginning of the career. I need someone to grind me and, and uh, yell at me like my dad. Can I yell at you like your dad? Uh, you do, just off the air, and you pretend you're this nice guy. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, if I may, oh, here comes all the comments here. Steve Smith. Writes in from Steinbeck, Manitoba, on the uh, 902 line. He says, the CFL needs to focus on being local. That's what matters. That's how you grow the CFL, in my opinion. That is with uh, local players, he's saying. I think that would be absolutely amazing. I just had that argument on Facebook the other day with uh, uh, one of my ex uh, uh, roommates and teammates put on a Team BC, like a like their high school Team BC picture. I'm like, we would have beat those. Team Ontario would have killed you guys. Hmm. Yeah. Jonathan Meyer writing in from the sweatpants capital. He says, Mike may have been a great cup champ and played 10 years in the league, but his biggest accomplishment was being the guest speaker with the provincial champion Eston Rambler year-end banquet. That was my last one. I think that uh, they didn't want me to have me do any, any more banquets after that. Stop. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Why? Yeah. I think that I didn't know where I was. I think I oh, said I was. Oh in... no! What's up, Springfield? <laughs> <laughs> You're an Aston. Uh, clearly, he says you did a great job. From Brady in the Bridge City, he says, "Hey, Rod, the Riders got dominated last night. Fell asleep right off the bat, and lack of discipline continues to hurt them." He says two Canadians, Ben Mattern and Shaden Sharp, for the first time ever, went back to back in the top seven in the NBA draft last night. Oh yeah. Where are you on the play of Cody Fajardo last night? He's getting a lot of heat today. Should he? Uh, he you, you can't get mad at a, at a lemon for being sour or a candy for being sweet. You can't right? teach a pig to paint. He's not the quarterback. He's not Warren Moon. He's not, you know, not going to come back from a three. He's keep the game close and win it, win it in the fourth quarter. That's him, and he's great at it. He's an outstanding quarterback at that. That's why you've got to find players that fit your system. Is he worth the money? Everyone's worth whatever you pay them. Stop it. Put your sports hat on. Is he worth being the second highest paid quarterback in the CFL? Yeah, yeah. As long as it's not $750,000. That's what nobody... That's a little much. That. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's... Dougal Cameron players. watching in Calgary regarding our guest last hour. He said, uh, Jeff Reinbold is money in the bank. What great insights he has. Can he come on the show every Friday? He has been on the show every Friday. <laughs> yeah, someone's been watching. Yeah, exactly. Uh, from Rose in Edmonton, she says, I love Jeff Reinbold as much as I love the Big Island. What an awesome guest. Oh, she's calling me the Big Island. Nice. I've lost some weight, but that's cool. That's a great nickname for you. That'd be, that's Luke's nickname. The Big Island? Yeah. The Big Island. Shamu. Um, do you want to stick around for another segment, or do you want to uh, let... Moose, come back up. I think you're probably I'll good stick. to stick for another one. Yeah, for sure. Let's Because there's business going on down here. We have a live studio audience. It's amazing here today at Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Did you notice when you were walking in here, because you said you hadn't been here, 
they play the sound effects of eagles in here. Or did you actually think there were eagles in here? All I could think about is, are they really smoking in here? <laughs> it's 1995, baby. I know, I felt cool again. I felt my hair growing back in. You know, want a shower afterwards. Yeah, with the, uh, it's a club. Well, it's right, it's good, yeah. yeah. We'll this be back, we'll be back for a final segment Taco Time viewer takeover right after this. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus TV network. Live streaming on YouTube always. And if you missed any portion of the show, you can always catch the podcast wherever the best podcasts are found, including Amazon, Google, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Every kitchen is a restaurant. Fish. With Cavendish Farms Restaurant Style Fries. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. It's what we call overtime, and it's brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the Stanley Cup playoffs and the UFC. There is a fight night tomorrow night. Uh, this here is Taco Time viewer takeover. Taco Time, real food, real value, real flavor. Taco Time. If you can believe there are over 
14 in the Calgary area, over 120 Canada-wide. But we turn this over to the viewers here right now. Uh, JT watching in the chat says, Can Mike Abu Meshrick come on every Friday? Wayne in Victoria says, I love the idea of Abu being on every Friday on the RP show. You've got commitments, however, right? Or do you want to be on every Friday? Every Friday? As, as, as many said, as possible? Every is a long time. Uh, he said never is a long time. So is every. Never, never is a long time. I'll do it, let's do it again sometime. I do have to get back to Regina sooner or later. Okay. Uh, they're on Fajardo still. About what? What, what? what did they want? They want an orange to be an apple? Is that, is that what it is? I, I read a crazy comment that someone said, we got to get rid of uh, Moss. we got to get rid of the best offensive coordinator in the league because their center is a rookie. I saw... See, this is why I do better with people yelling at me. I feel like I need to yell at that person and tell them to stop being an idiot. Yeah, I'm not supposed to yell. But well. I didn't mind the offense last night or any, in the other games. I mean, they were going downfield... Every chance they could go downfield, they were going downfield when Fajardo wasn't running for his life. Going into last night's game, he was the most accurate 20-plus yard passer in the league, Cody Fajardo. But Maybe if they weren't going stats. downfield, you know, I know, but if they weren't going downfield, they would say, oh, a five-yard out again. I don't mind them taking shots. Stats. You're talking about stats. The, the, the offense yeah, that they have. but you're not a believer in stats? I love numbers. Because you can make him do anything. I have more Grey Cups than Muhammad Ali. Greatest story you've ever told. It's a fact. Who's Bingo! this guy? Yeah. yeah. Who's this Ali guy? <laughs> he was actually how many, at how a many game. Grey right? Cups? Yeah. And I, didn't I even got go more Grey Cups than him. I got more Grey Cups than him. I'm not going to go over and I shake like his hand. It. Ted in Red Deer wants to know how you would address the Rough Riders' lack of discipline. I, I, I've never noticed a lack of discipline before. Uh, it, when, the, when the first kick gets kicked off and it, when the first kick of the game gets returned for a touchdown, when you're fighting uphill the entire game, um, when that belief that you're not going to win sets mm-hmm. in, the, the discipline is gone. What are you really fighting for? If you don't really think... And it didn't really look like the Riders thought they were going to win for, for at least the second half of that game. When that belief is gone, I mean, you can hoot and holler and say, yeah, 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 we're going to win all you want. But when that inner heart drive is gone, the, what are you being disciplined about? What is there to be disciplined to? The game, all that other stuff. But, yeah, that's all nice and fine. We're there to win. You're not there to just play a game. Uh, Jeff Cabellos in Winnipeg says, Abu's insight is pure fire. From Stacy Champagne watching at Access World Headquarters. He says, we could use Mike Abu Meshrick on the offensive line today. How about 80 that? Pounds ago. <laughs> Up. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's the thing. Friday, it's overreaction Friday, if you will. But we can say this. Your boy, Alex Goche, was on the show on Monday. Oh, man, I the love goat. that guy. He's, he's the best, favorite. isn't he? Yeah, he's the GOAT. And I said, who's the best team in the CFL? Do you know what he said? It's too early. It is way too early. All right. Yeah. But I think we can reasonably stroke off the list of best teams, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. We can take them off the list. It could still be Calgary. It could still be Winnipeg. It could still be BC. I think it's one, of the, lost te- I think it's one of the teams that the GOAT played on. That's probably the best team in the league. Ottawa, Winnipeg, Calgary, and Hamilton. Sask. It's every team in the league, man. Or either him or one of the best teams that Kevin Glenn played on is definitely the best team in the league. Who do you think is the best team in the CFL? I think Winnipeg's the best team in the CFL. Uh, not, um, not only because they're champs, maybe that breaks, a, breaks the tie, but um, their confidence, their skill, their confidence matches their skill. And... I know the leadership on there, so I mean that has a lot to go on with it too. BC, I don't know so much about. All the opposite, I don't know their leadership. I don't know how skilled they are. Um, That's fine. Yeah, we're just letting you rock here. This is like this is like I can't say Calgary a pregame show for the entire week three, the CFL or what's left. Again, we've talked about Winnipeg Hamilton tonight. In Hamilton tonight, you feel Winnipeg will win. 
Um, Calgary Edmonton tomorrow. How bad is it going to be? Stamps favored by eight here. Bo Levi Mitchell game time decision. It, 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 how bad will it be? Probably double digits by the Stamps. Stamps, yeah. Stamps will, but again, it's, it's still too early. Two and one. I mean, you have a good game. You have a bad game. We're st- teams are still trying to figure out what their identity is what their identity is. And to be honest with you, I haven't really figured out, like I just admitted, I don't really know who BC is. I don't really know who these teams, I mean, watching parts of two games and stuff like that, I don't know, they don't know who they are. Um, you know, you need to define that, uh, uh, define who you are uh, in, in the first four, four weeks of the season. If you go 0-4, it's tough, tough to come out of that oh yes so you can't go on four unless you go on three that's why the uh, 2011 bc lions are so vaunted and there you go your st- there's with your stats of course anything you know it actually happened though i, I know um, and, and we lost the calgary you know in 2001 robin and prince albert why doesn't elon musk like taco time it gives him gas oh no um next question Uh, Pardon the interruption. Oh, he's Googled taco jokes because they're coming in now. And uh, this is a viewer takeover here for taco time. And people have written in with these jokes before. Um, Let's just have some fun stuff. Third best city in the world to live in, Calgary, Alberta, behind Vienna, Austria, and Copenhagen, Denmark. Regina is a really nice place to live. Of course. (laughs) Basically spent think, half a century. So there. that's. What, do you think they went and checked out Regina, or do you think they only looked at the amenities on a piece of paper? I didn't read the entire article. I probably should go as to what, why it was voted last minute of play in the RP show. Last minute of play. But look around. Uh, oh, my kids. The hair, to, my, hair. My kids are here. I'm still in Regina, but. I remember my kids both had, one had dance practice and one had soccer practice, both at five o'clock on opposite ends of the city. No other city in the world can you get them both there on time. That's right. Yeah. Every, every city is great for different reasons. Absolutely. But we're really, really, really enjoying our time here, and I'm really, really looking forward to Saturday's Calgary Stampeders, Edmonton Elks game, 5 p.m., and then the Cavalry on Sunday. We're doing it. Go I, Cavs. Oh, man, that's a whole other show. Who are we, we playing? About. Doesn't matter. They're losing. They're going down. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's soccer, Canadian Premier League. Thanks to Jeff Reinbold. Thanks to Abu. Thanks to the live studio audience here at Great Eagle Resort and Casino. We'll see you Monday, noon Eastern, here on Game Plus. How about that? You like me to shut up. He wants me to talk. How about that? Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Oh, beautiful, spicy.